question is that Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam came with one mission. How would a follower of that one mission respond to scriptures of, uh, for example, Hinduism and Sikhism? You Could you repeat the last part? How would a follower of that mission brought by the uh, prophets, peace and blessings be upon them, respond to the scriptures of Hinduism and Sikhism? <coughs> the brother posed the question that how will the followers of Moses, Jesus and Muhammad, peace be upon them, follow? Or how will they respond, respond to the scriptures of the Hindus and Sikhs, and the Sikhs, etc.? As far as the scriptures are concerned, of the other religion, Hinduism, etc., as I mentioned, that even if you go to these scriptures of the Hindus, they too talk about the same common mission. They too talk about the same common mission. Where people may ask me, that does it mean that Ram is God, or is he a messenger of God, sorry, or is Krishna a messenger of God? See, as the Quran says that there were 124,000 messengers sent on the face of the earth, by name only 25 are mentioned, I cannot say that Ram or Krishna is surely the messenger of God. Because his name is not mentioned in any Quranic verse, neither in any Sai Hadith. What I can say, maybe they are, maybe they are not. But even if they are the messengers of God, they were meant for those people and for that time. Today, you have to follow the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Coming to the scriptures, the Vedas, the Bhagavad Gita, similarly, there has been a revelation sent in every age. By name, only four are mentioned in the Quran. Veda, a question may be asked, can we consider it to be the word of God? I say, I don't know. We cannot say for sure it's the word of God. Maybe it is, maybe it is not. But even if it is the word of God, it was only meant for those people and for that time. Today, we have to follow the last and final message, that's the last and final testament, the glorious Quran. But in spite of this, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 79, فَوَيْلُونَ لِلَّذِينَ يَخْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِهِمْ سُمَّا يَقُلُونَ هَذَا مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمْنًا كَلِيلًا فَوَيْلُونَ لَهُمْ مِمَّا قَتَبَتْ أَيْدِهِمْ وَيْلُونَ لَهُمْ مِمَّا يَكْسِبُونَ Woe to those who write the book with their own hands and then say, this is from Allah, to traffic with it for a miserable price. Woe to those for what they write, woe to those for what they earn. All the revelation that came before the glorious Quran, the last and final revelation, all of them have not been maintained in the pure form. Allah says, people have changed the scripture. They have not been maintained. The only revelation, because since it was meant for a particular time period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't think it fit to preserve it. But Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, we have revealed the Quran and we shall guide from corruption. But in spite of this, in spite of this, even though they have been changed, Alhamdulillah, praise be to Almighty God, that yet, in this corrupted form, yet you will find the prophecy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in it. The prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And you can refer to my video cassette, which mentions these prophecies. He has been prophesied in the Puranas. He has mentioned the Bhavishya Purana, Khanda 3, Adhyata 3, Shlokas 5 to 8. He also prophesied in Bhavishya Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyata 3, Shlokas 10 to 27. He has prophesied in the Sam Ved, Book number two, chapter number six, verse number eight. He's prophesied in the Kuntap Suktas. That is the Atharva Ved, book number 20, hymn number 127, verse number one to 13. He's been prophesied in the Atharva Ved, book number 20, chapter number 20, verse number six. There are several prophecies about him in the Hindu scriptures. He's also prophesied in the, in the six scriptures. He's also prophesied in the Parsi scriptures. You can refer to my video cassette, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the various world scriptures. So if you have to be a good Hindu, you have to follow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you have to be a good Parsi, you have to follow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If you have to be a good Buddhist, you have to follow Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Not only is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, prophesies, even the mention that you should worship only one God is mentioned in the scriptures. If you read, Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20, it says, all those whose desires, all those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods. So Bhagavad Gita says, all the materialistic people, they do idol worship. Amongst the Hindu scriptures, the others are the Upanishads. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. 
Ekam evidityam. It's a Sanskrit quotation which means God is only one without the second. It's mentioned in the Sveta Sveta Upanishad, chapter number six, verse number nine. Nakasya kasij, janita nakadipa. Again, it's a Sanskrit quotation which means Almighty God has got no Lord, He has got no parents. It's mentioned in the Sveta Sveta Upanishad, chapter number four, verse number 19. Na patima asti. Of Him, there is no likeness. Among the Hindu scriptures, the most sacred are the Vedas. It's mentioned in the Ayurved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, Na Tasripatima Asti, of him there is no images. It's mentioned in the Ayurved, chapter number 40, verse number 8, that Almighty God is bodiless and pure. It's mentioned in the Ayurved, chapter number 40, verse number 9, Andhatmi Pavishanti Ya Asambhuti Mupaste. They are entering darkness, those who worship the Asambhuti, the natural things like fire, water, air, etc. And the verse continues, they are entering more in darkness, those who worship the Asambhuti, that the created things like table, chair, idols, etc. Who says that? Yajurved, chapter number 40, verse number 9. And you can go on and on quoting, it's mentioned in Rigved, the most sacred amongst the Vedas. Book number 8, hymn number 1, verse number 1, March in the Sansad, all praises are due to him alone. It's mentioned in Rigved, book number 6, chapter number 45, verse number 16, Ya ek it mushtihi, there is only one God, worship him alone. And the Brahma Sutra of Hinduism is, Ekkam Brahm Dustya Naste, Niya Naste Kinchan, Bhagwan Eki hai, Dusra nahi hai, Nahi hai, Nahi hai, Zara bhi nahi hai. There is only one God, not a second one, not at all, not at all, not in the least bit. So again, even while speaking to the other non-Muslims, whether it be Hindu, whether it be Parsi, whether it be Buddhist, I use the same verse which I started my talk with. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. This is the master key according to me in the Quran for doing da'wah with any non-Muslim. Let him belong to any faith. Let him not have a faith also. The best is, Allah na'buda illallah. Based on the criteria, ta'ala yula kalmitum, sawa'im, banina banakum. Come to common terms as been us and you.